interests of whoever is playing that off guard a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you're playing slow and then all of a sudden you throw in a rush towards ramp with, you know, just flashes over, I mean, that can be very powerful. So, I believe we're getting some trolling from netcodeguys.com. Are we? Are we? Are we? Are we? We are live. We are live. So, this is live. Hopefully, these will be closer than the previous two contests that we've seen today. Sibo now presents to you our featured match of the evening netcodeguides.com versus Manajuman. On the CT side, let's go through the rosters. It's Hayes, Lucky, JDM, Finesse, and Cutler. And for the T side, we just saw them. It's Desi, Urikanji, Shroud, Diebel, and Miniker. And on the outbreak, we have a 2-2-1 two, two, split for A. They'll all join together, and I think we may see that force window or not. They'll just cruise on up through the connector, hit a long-distance Glock shot, and Finesse is down. They'll look for the flank, smart enough, because in the last game, we never saw that. And I think, uh, who was it that did so much damage on that far flank that was always flanking? Was it... Uh, Irakanji, I believe. Irakanji, perhaps. Two left for the CTs. Hayes and Lucky are both at A. The bomb is being forced into the site. It doesn't really have to be. All the same, gunfight is uh, is pretty luring, so everybody just kind of wants to hunt for these last kills. Hayes is looking to kill that bomb planter. He tucks behind the ticket booth to reload, but that's never going to work. Mini Clear cleans that up. 1-0 for Manajuma. And they don't lose a single man, so I mean that is a good round for Manajuma right there. And you know, I initially thought they were going to go for the window boost because they had four people in mid and one person in the A apps, and I thought they were going to do some cheeky play, but uh, they decided to go up the connector and spotted the player, one of the CTs just directly in the site in their, in their field of view, and they were able to just get that kill, and then you saw the flank come from the catwalk, which... Uh, oh, God. Oh, Finesse, Finesse was too slow through the, uh, the little under... What do we call that? A grate, I suppose? I, I just literally forgot the call. Slow through the grate, comes out the window, and was caught in mid air by his opponent. That happens to be Miniker. Cutler comes back. We'll probably see the entry fragger at A come out, and that might be Desi. He turns away just a second too early. Still has a chance at it. No good. AK cleans him up, and Lucky comes to take his spot. Hit a long-distance headshot, maybe. There it is. That second shot cruised up, made a little bit of a traversal, and finds Desi's head. Three alive for the CTs. Four alive for the T's now, just two for the CTs, and Hayes has very little health, so he'll bait himself, let himself die, and leave JDM there, perhaps to make some sort of miraculous play with a grand total of 20 bullets. And that may not happen, so that's the cleanup. An extra bit of cash for D1? No, he's not going to even go for it. He wants the CZ instead. So we're going to skip the analysis because we didn't do predictions, and someone in chat asked, did Klopp say that uh, Netkins was going to win? Uh, no. Before we actually started casting this, I, th I said I think that Manajum was the favorite, and when we saw the complexity match that we just casted, then, I mean, I think they... I kind of confirmed it. Yeah, confirmed it greatly. I think Manajum is going to walk away with this one. I think it'll be about 16-10. Ooh, okay. All right. I feel, I feel like the same, but you know how I am. I'm sort of a hopeless romantic when it comes to these sorts of things. I just want an epic game. I'm going to call it 16-14 in favor of Manajum, and GM <laughs> steps up into the palace finds Desi trying to just desperately bring out his AK. Can't do it. And the CTs have five alive, though two are very weak. Four for the Ts, and they are mostly fully equipped with your kanji cruising around with the P90. The bomb is moving its way back toward a ramp, oddly enough, by itself. And this is a dangerous maneuver if they lose anyone over there. They've got one wrap, and that happens to be your kanji waiting in the connector saying, wait, 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 wait for me. I'm going to own... Okay, I thought Cutler might have just screwed up his opportunity there. Picks up a gun, three versus three. And the bomb still can't be planted. It's almost as if they're at the beginning of the round, still trying to force their way into bombsite. A Shroud is only now just taking the sight. And through the ticket booth, finds Hayes, Pierce. Also, JDM, who picked up the AK earlier, comes out from the apartments and brings down the bomb plants. They're two very weak tees. And netcode guides could have an eco win if they just play this very calmly, very smartly. And this adroit move will reward Cutler. Miniker is the last with his op with only 7 HP. He's probably thinking about how do I get out of this bomb side alive? I need to save this. I don't know if I can save this. Yeah, from I actually thought he was more towards the uh, the electrical connector, but he was actually in that sandwich position. And I was thinking, why isn't he just running away trying to save this? But he was in a, oh, a tight he, spot. And he heard him drop. I'm he I'm almost certain of it. We just yeah, now have to This wait. is going to be huge because that op was such an expensive third round buy. I mean, if he loses this thing, that's going to be a huge uh, 
Huge bonus for Netcode Gods. He's banking on the fact that his opponent is Cutler with low HP because with an op out, he would have had a guaranteed kill. Now he just hides, and I don't think, I don't think anybody really had an idea until the very end where their opponent was. That's a huge stroke of luck to keep that off. Like you said, a force buy, an expensive force buy. Yeah, and now Manajum will be able to buy uh, their AKs and their nades, and it should just be like a standard buy round for these guys, even though they did just get ecoed. Um, but you see JDM does have the op, so I'm going to go to his perspective because I want to see this uh, potential op battle between him and JDM. Both shot, both missed. Second attempt by JDM, still no good, and his folly was that he was overconfident in coming back out. He's left with 10 HP. We'll go back to our... General director here in the mid control for Manajuma seems to be on the tap today. Two in the underpass, and they'll smoke out the connector, making it impossible for anyone to see. But if they just come up to the top of the smoke, they may be able to see over the top of the the uh, the circumference of that smoke plume. They forced one into the uh, the window, and I actually said that Netcode Guys is going to be the type to do the force boost. I mean, when we mean force boost is different than a, a standard boost is when five are alive and somebody should be playing that position. I'm not sure how long they're going to let that player lurk there because it's an option to be a lurker here or to be a huge multi-fragger here. Hirokanji will be an entry fragger. He brings down JDM. He'll make way for other players to boost in if they so choose, or they'll just maneuver and wait for the rotators around the map to make the mistakes for them. Like that, but Hirokanji didn't get his target right where he wanted it to, so Lucky beats him. I like that. I like the fact that they use Hirokanji as more of an entry than, a, than an actual designated lurk. Yeah, it worked out really nicely for him, and you know, Irukandji just stayed in that spot in the window, uh, played it really nicely, and he just called for that flash, and it got him a nice, easy kill. But, I mean, the trades are just going back and forth right now. These teams are very, very equally matched. Two versus three, and the CTs have position, or no, they don't. That player that went down, excuse me, Finesse, was the player who had the position on the bomb. That means with 20 seconds left, a bomb plant is very possible, but it's getting more and more difficult the closer Lucky gets, and he's blown away. Cutler is the last, he has an op, and though they won last round with some grit, he <laughs> is, uh, he's not going to win this one, I don't think. No, he's he's basically on a save mission. I mean, that kill right there was just a bonus for him. He picked up Minikur's op, and he's running away with it for the save. Um, so, and it looks like he's trying to get hunted here by Deborn, which, if Deborn keeps going quick, I mean, he could get him, but he's probably going to hear him. All right, the hunt is on, and I want to be on the hunter. Deborn comes around looking at this wall. Has an idea, sees his leg, comes out, and will strip the eight. Uh, he doesn't know where the op went. He has no idea. Either way, I mean, even if he doesn't get that op, I mean, that's unfortunate. You know, sometimes when you do get that kill and the op is falling to the ground here, leftover AK burst just knocks it <laughs> knocks it somewhere, and it's very hard to find. You but, can see he was frustrated. He was he was spinning around for that. I mean, you can tell Miniker was yeah. probably in TeamSpeak being like, get it, get it, get it. He had no idea where it was. Yeah, I mean, you know, when they get that off, that would have helped them out greatly here. But uh, either way, you know, they, they do stop the CTs from holding on to that off, so that's going to be huge in itself. Netcode Guides goes with the 131 hold, and that 131 is a focused concentration of defense on mid. And with their sidearms, it's kind of difficult to do. Irukanji hits the first shot, and that death was in bombsite. A fast shot by Hayes. Midikur goes down, and. He uh, really probably didn't even see his assailant. Irukanji comes up to the sandwich looking for that trade, thinking that I need to figure out who killed my teammate so I can even it all up. In the jungle is Hayes waiting at that back corner. JDM and Hayes will wait. This retake is four versus four, sidearm versus rifles. Desi comes through looking for somebody else to come back to fight him, and it's actually behind him that his opponent is hiding. Cutler's in the ticket booth and already getting spammed, so it doesn't look like the CTs are making an active effort to retake so much as looking for exits, and I, I'm pretty sure Manajuma knows what the game plan is for the CTs, so they're going actively hunting for them. Yeah, and I mean, it's well, it's going to be hard for Cutler to retake this with just that uh, Mag 7 right there. You saw he tried to go for it. If he would have got the kill, it would have been some bonus money for him, but, you know, trying to retake with pistols versus AKs, that's going to be tough in itself. So, yeah, I mean, if they're just waiting for, for exits, I mean, that's not a bad play. Um, but, I mean, I got to say, that was really good heads up on manager right there and good game awareness because it seemed that they knew that Netcos was going to be on a save based on how the rounds went, and they decided to go quick, <clears throat> excuse me, quickly speed aggression into A and didn't waste any time, and it was only one person really defending uh, while two were stacked over at the connector, and they just stormed the site and were got in no problem.
It is, as you said, the change of pace probably earned them an extra round here, and that splash over and the smoke will blind Haze as he runs away 1 1 on the trade. Shroud is the one who goes down in the apartments, and they know now JDM is behind them again with an AK. This is an uncomfortable plant, but they have a smoke, so they'll get away. Cutler's in the smoke! He could have been the executioner, brought down Desi, and even gone for the ninja defuse, but he misses a point blank swag shot, and that is just heartbreaking. It's such an easy kill to make. Yeah, Manajuma is up by four. That was the second uh, point blank mag seven uh, shot that Cutler didn't get a kill on. I mean, you saw in the previous round before that he he had a chance at the same thing and he missed it. And you know, this round they're on a full buy. We're seeing JDM sixty four with an op, and actually this time Miniker does not have one. So uh, this round can go in favor of them if they can just if JDM could just get a couple picks here. Really, really tough luck for Cutler, and I think just maybe some nerves, maybe just some cooled off gameplay, maybe he didn't deathmatch recently enough, it just threw him off there, and it could have really changed the outcome of the round. We'll never know, and maybe in the long run, it won't be terribly important. We'll hope so, because I hope it's a tie game by the time we come back to this point. Three men at the A ramp, one in the apps, and a far lurk. Who is that lurk? Let's take a look. It's Irukandji playing, uh, playing at the, all the way at the bomb site. B. A smoke in the door will slow down the A take just temporarily. They'll go with their set pieces. I think I want to keep an eye on where those smokes land so we can see who they're trying to isolate because this personnel management for Manajuma is critical. They're, they're having a great deal of success. It's a matter of who they're chasing after. They have always, Netcode Guides, have somebody playing close. And, uh, and clearly isolating him is not so hard because you just have to look for him, hit the entry shot. But the second person that they're bringing down is really where they're finding their success. Irukandji actually successfully brought over Cutler with his sound bait to uh, the B site. Even more, he was playing pushed up on Cat, and now they have a six, uh, successful 5-3 take here, and he's going to go back to that lurk position. But uh... Shroud is in the dark, finds Finesse. Nobody checks the firebox, and it doesn't matter. Hazed was not fast enough to bring down Shroud. You're right, that over-rotate is, uh, is game-changing here, and Irukandji even finds the man who caused to rotate even earlier, and you said it was Cutler who over-rotated? It was, yeah, and it was not only Cutler, but even JDM went to the window to watch that rather than stick it, sticking in jungle looking towards A, so, I mean, they had a good take on that A site thanks to that sound base. So confirmed Cutler's having a hard first half? Yes, <laughs> missing two point blank swag shots and then over-rotating. Uh, he's definitely having a hard time here. Last player alive gets two tapped. Deborn cleans up JDM. Manajuma had a very masterful take there. And according to our analyst, it all was set up by the efforts of Mr. Irukandji. I'm impressed. I really am. Manajuma has looked just unbelievably good in their first game versus Complexity if you were here. And now they're looking to be in dominant fashion again versus Netcode Guides. Yeah, I'm honestly surprised Cutler sat around there so long because, I mean, uh... Irukandji did the sound bait, and then he ran all the way through T spawn back towards the A ramp. I mean, so that's a, a long rotate by him. He so, and there was still no action at B. So I don't know Speed why he was to be. staying there so long. Yeah, we haven't seen action at B, not until just yet. A cascade, a waterfall of flashes fall into the site. Lucky backs off to the white truck, trying just to preserve his vision, and nobody can hold on. Again, they go with the speed on the eco round, knowing the netco guys is not very capable of, of warding off just a, a huge flow of T's with automatic weapons, and they start to run over the uh, the CT's with their sidearms. So a piercing kill by Irukandji to wrap that one up. Another good, good play call uh, from the Manajuma squad, and they've, they've got, they're playing this map like a fiddle, like a musical instrument, man. Yeah, they, they know what they're doing on Mirage, and it's very, very obvious here. I mean, they're, they're mixing everything up here. They got the slow play, they got the speed, uh, they got the fakes, so they're doing a great job. Um, and they're, you know, they're switching it up effectively where... <laughs> oh, wow. So, <laughs> Optimal loses. But anyways, yeah, they're switching it up effectively where the CTs are kind of, you know, focusing on one side of the map, and then they do a speed rush to the other, and they just can't stop it. So, I mean, Manajuma is just on fire on Mirage right now. Yeah, they do drop a nade right into the smoke underneath Cutler, who takes about 50% damage, drops back while firing his M4A4, and if you drop back through the smoke, sending those tracers back out of the smoke is a pretty strong advertisement that you might want to pre-fire or just blindly shoot into the smoke, and that box is pierceable lucky, so you might get spammed. You might get spammed. <laughs> as soon as that nade comes over, they're like, oh, okay. Oh, spam it. <laughs> <laughs> 
There's Lucky, who is now down, and Finesse is the last. Our number four is who we follow on the Tetris. Point blank attempt by Miniker. No good. Now we have to get, a, I think, a triple or a quad clutch, or a D-Born will finish it up for us. Eight to one, Manajuma leads by a, quite a margin. It would have been an ace for, uh, for a Finesse if he finished that off. So, I mean, yeah, he had some work to do to close that round up. But eight to one, Manajuma just, you know, can carrying this momentum over from the complexity game, looking very strong. And, I mean, they... Previously, on the previous game, they were a CT side, so, I mean, the fact that they're having such a good T half right now, I mean, it's uh, kind of scary knowing that they're just going to go to CT side where they pretty much had it locked down. These guys, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just this map. They, are, they seem to be just in full control of this. The initial gun battle between Lucky and Desi goes the way of Lucky, though Desi had the drop on him, and they have a forced push into the window. They've done this before. JDM spammed, and I don't know if he realized, but if he just listened... He would have heard that that last bullet contacted flesh so i think he knows he knows he still gets well he flicks a flash turns back to your kanji gets the headshot so i'm um, first of all amazed that 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 worked out i thought he had for sure just thrown that away yeah <clears throat> sorry my voice is uh, kind of losing I, I know you're sick i know you're sick Great awareness and a double kill picked up for Netcode, guys. The momentum has finally shifted for the counter terrorists, and if they wrap this round up real nicely with no deaths, they'll go back into building their economy. Here's the risk. Let's just say this right now. They've been leaning heavily on a losing bonus, so they can't afford to lose again because that would spell disaster for the half. Yeah, um, I mean, that one right there, well, the new one, sorry. Um, I'm completely lost right in that round. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But no, like you said, I mean, it, the losing bonus, uh, if they do get a one, it is going to be a double-edged sword for them because, I mean, if it, that just going to hit the reset button and then, I mean, Manajuma's uh, ferocity is just going to come into play and they're going to probably pick up another round, which will force Netcode guides into another save, unfortunately. Counter flash. I think Hayes wants to push. He's flashed in. Nobody's at the ramp except for the man on his right. Does he get anything out of this? Still no, nothing to do here. JDM hits a, a nade kill, and Desi will finally engage Hayes, who backed off initially. Four versus three on the CTs, and Manajuma looks like they're pressing. I'm interested to point. I, I'm not interested to know uh, earlier in this game how they would try to siphon the site. And today, their their sectioning off of the site is not deep. They're not throwing these smokes to the ticket booth. They're instead throwing them into the into the bomb site itself. What the result is, therefore, is players who are hiding in the site are forced to come out or back off. And players who are close are isolated from their teammates Cutler can hear the B-Tunnel. So call his teammate up and he says, Lucky, get ready. They're right above you. Shroud is looking right here and Shroud's really fast. You're not going to be able to jump and survive that again. So Lucky drops back out from the white truck, falls up underneath the B-Tunnels and tries to hit a pretty stupendous shot if he does. So they'll back out. Maybe. Here's the flank. Here Kanji sees JDM trying to get this kill. No good. Two early ones for Manajuma. They brought down Hayes and Jade. Oh, strafe job. Lucky's pushing right through the smoke. Oh my god. Stick with him. It's a fracas melee. He had no idea what was happening. He dumped maybe 17 shots all around Dibor and made a huge, huge outline of him and didn't pick up the kill. 10 to 2. What did I just see? Had Lucky had a gun, um, that could have been an amazing James Bond play right there. That strafe jump into the smoke. They had no idea he was in there. And, I mean, <laughs> he could have come up so big right there. Had Lucky just been, like, a little luckier, he, that terrorist took up half of his screen. Like, how did, how did that not work? I, I don't know. The tracers were coming out from the AK as well. That guy was spamming. You, he should have been able to get that kill. We'll never know. We'll have to ask him, I suppose. And the first kill by Deepborn is, is looking just so nice. Manajuma... I, I need to ask them, is this their best map? Like, surely they have to feel like this must be one of their best maps. It seems that way. I mean, they... I gotta say, this is the strongest I've seen Manajuma on a map. I mean, uh, they are just looking lights out here on Mirage. Remember, ever since Shroud came in, we had to give them time. Our comments were about time for, for meshing, time for that sort of chemistry. We're about four to five weeks building up now, away from the time where we first started talking about this. That consolidation and solidification of this roster may be becoming more apparent now, I think. Just maybe. Yeah, I mean, they, they are getting it together. I mean, and honestly, they, 
even with the addition of Shroud, they still haven't looked that weak. Like, uh, let's compare, say, uh, Anger going to Complexity. They didn't have that much of a problem adjusting. I mean, there's a little bit here and there, but I mean, for the most part, they seem to be meshing pretty well and doing well in their matches. So, I mean, the adjustments that they had to make were really, really small. Let me let me ask you this, since we completely glossed over this, Netcode guys just wrapped up a really nice round. They cornered the entire Mana Duma roster somewhere in the B tunnels and sort of systematically hunted them down. What is it that we just missed? Because I wanna I wanna extol the virtues of Netcode guys when we can, you know. Yeah, um, I think it's just essentially they came out and uh, hit their shots that round. I mean, for the most part. Uh, NECA guides, they're, I think they're not really making any huge mistakes. It just seems for the most part that uh, Manager is out shooting him. Well, Cutler punishes uh, Shroud and Hirakanji and maybe picks up a quad. No, just a triple. JDM will call no joy and bring <laughs> just up. Just a triple. Bring, just a triple. No big deal. With actually poor position. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of cover there. He just translated all that into very, very fantastic aim. Desi's the last, and this round will probably be a loss unless he does something that I've never quite seen before. 10 to 4, and it's not the half you want for netcodeguys.com, but at least you're seeing some semblance of life. Here's the difference um, that could be this, the, the mitigating factor, right? Manajuma was very, very warmed up before coming into this game, and netcodeguys.com might have just been, maybe they were matchmaking, maybe they were in an empty server being like, okay, remember these smokes and flashes, we'll just do our thing, which is much different than having a live game of complexity before your exceed no, match. Not just being warm, warmed up, but I mean, I, I, I could only imagine that uh, Manajuma was, ex, you know, very pumped off of that win from Complexity because, I mean, it was pretty crushing. And if, if I know if I beat Complexity that hard, the, you know, what used to be the number one team in NA, uh, I'd be pretty stoked. So I think that would definitely be a, a, a pump up for your, uh, for your playing. Yeah, three have seized the site and Desi clears out the man who is coming up out of the supermarket and the trade there by Cutler will bring down Irakanji so Desi will come back to avenge his teammate's death drops FNS or finesse two versus two and Desi just barely hangs on Dborn will have to do most of the legwork he can't and his teammate dies also in the process of that sentence the diffuse is good the half will end 10 to 5 you're watching Seaboy TV I'm Cotton and the the ill man who I'm impressed is still alive and casting is Klops DJ Klops <laughs> precise yeah, um, I mean, Netcode Guides kind of stopping the bleeding a little bit there towards the end, picking up, you know, three rounds in a row. So, I mean, they did a good job towards the end there. Maybe they are getting warmed up, like you said. Maybe they weren't as warm as uh, Manny Juma here. So, we'll have to see how this T-side go goes. I mean, it's completely salvageable for them. If they get this pistol round and roll over those next two rounds, then, I mean, they're, they're back in it. They certainly are. So this is a pivotal round, and the purchases for Netcode Guides will give away exactly what they're trying to accomplish. Four smokes, and this is almost, a com almost by default, a committed A-take. You don't need those smokes for really any other location on this map. With no armor and, uh, and no nades for Manajuma, this is going to be a fairly favorable take. They smoke out the ticket, they smoke out the top of the E-box, and also the jungle. All three are set in place. Lucky finds Desi trying to peek through the smoke. The site is almost seized. The walled off CT force will have to wait for this bomb plant. And Hayes charges through the smoke. They've just given up their man advantage by Hayes trying to make the YOLO play. And that, I hope, does not cost Netco guys their opportunity to make the comeback. <laughs> Finesse misses a boatload of shots at an open back of the CT there. And Cutler is now surrounded. This round is falling apart for NetcodeGuides.com. And they really, really did not want this to happen. JDM tries to reload, goes for his knife. One on one. Lucky needs to just survive. Just survive long enough. Let this detonate, please. Is this a committed defuse? No, it's not, but it's not a round win either. Irakanji will lose this one, and Lucky just did just, just barely enough. <laughs> barely enough. He did He did a great job. He was hitting uh, headshots left and right there with only, like, two hel uh, five health there. So, I mean, he was he was doing great, and Irakanji had a kit. So, I mean, ooh, that was close. If he would have went for that committed defuse, I think Lucky would have got the kill on regardless. But, I mean, he drowned for net codes, and that's exactly what they needed to get back in this. Like I said, if they pick up these next two, which, I mean, it should be, it should be doable for them. They have the gun advantage now. 
They um, saw Miniker. And they did see Miniker right there, so they do have an idea of what they're doing. They should be able to do this. Hirakanji charges up the catwalk, gives away the... I, uh, yeah, he ran right into the ladder and straight back out, giving himself up for an easy kill. Lucky will drop him, move into bombsite B. They know Miniker should be probably behind them in the B tunnels. If he turns back around in there, they should look back up into the B tons. Lucky comes back out to the catwalk. There's Miniker right on time, just like clockwork, and Cutler was there to receive. Here's the last rotator. It's Dborn out in open space, and he is dropped. Dropped by JDM. It's 7 to 10. Netcode Guides is just closing the gap a little. Just a little bit, but I mean, they're doing a good job. Uh, I mean, that first round, they did lose quite a few people, but, the, you know, the CT economy is just so expensive that there is not going to be a third round buy for Manny Juma here. Uh, instead, we're going to see some pistols, a couple CZs being picked up, but uh, that's about it. So, I mean, like I said, you know, it, it's another doable round for netcodes, and if they do this, then, I mean, the deficit's only within two, so they should be able to come back very easily from that. We have a five-man mid-control push. They're all supporting each other, making sure that their guns are not taken away. And a stack from the CT team, Manajuma, is all waiting in bombsite B. Desi's making a whole lot of noise, trying to spam through with a bunch of tracers, being like, we're stacking A, don't come through here, go to B. It may work. It may work. It's just a matter of where this decision is. It's a complete coin toss for Netcode guys who, is, who have yet to really determine where they want to go. They may put somebody through the window, and that could be their best choice. They may have seen Desi. Yeah, he did. They may have seen Desi, though, who is holding that corner, which is probably a good reason to fall. There's the kill. Cutler gets it, and they'll try to force their way into A. It looks like they've, out, they've absolutely calculated this correctly. They run in, and they're like, nope, nobody's in here. They stacked B, so look for the rotates, guys. Stay out at mid. Hayes does just that, or just waits by the jungle, and everybody else becomes the cleanup crew. Deborn breaks this vent. It's sad times. Very sad times. Yeah, that, I mean, unfortunately, you go for the gamble stack, and it doesn't always pay off, and it didn't right there. Um, when Desi actually fired those pistol shots, I thought, you know, that's going to, if anything, not sell the fact that they aren't stacked because, I mean, it's only one pistol firing off. So, I mean, I think that kind of drew uh, netcode guys towards that site. And they, you know, they brought it with them too, so they're looking good now. I don't know if we're going to see an op duel in mid again, but, you know, we're not. JDM's going towards B. I'm getting a couple messages from... Uh from a couple of our mods saying that we're, they're trying to enforce the spoilers. Guys, if, if you guys do know the score and people choose not to listen to There's, those things, please don't give away the score to the, to the other viewers. They're just trying to yeah, watch we, this. I mean, we could just put it to some mode if we need to. So We'll do that toward the end of the game because that's sort of standard operating procedure. What else is not a standard operating procedure is if you crush your in, opponents in bombs like B. I had, a, I had this like slight hope that Irukandji was going to pick up a double or a triple there. Deborn could not control the M4A1. Lucky will pick him up. It's four versus three. The CTs on the retake are in poor position and JDM is standing right next to Desi. He just quick scopes him without ever seeing him. Maybe the barest muzzle flash. Two alive, Miniker and the, uh, the man of the hour always. Shroud drops out. They try to save their guns. And now with this much time on the clock and this many T's alive, I think the hunt may be on. Oh god, lucky <laughs> Matrix is the boy. He's like, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm running. I'm done with this. Yeah, I don't want to hunt the guy with the op and who's held up in the A site. No, but they're going to go for it because if they can force that op and Shroud's gun, I mean, that's going to give them an even bigger lead. Uh, I mean, they took that round, and now the CT should be completely saving here. Taking a look at the money, I mean, they're at 3,400. Yeah, it's going to be a save. Um, if they tried to go for a force buy, it'd probably just be a bad idea because, uh, you know, Netcodes does have the gun evangel, have the AKs versus Famuses, so that will not work well for Mine and Jimmy. And, I mean, we could be seeing a 10-10 tie here coming up very shortly. We can only hope we will have a game. Well, let's be honest. We have a game on our hands already. Three out to control mid, the bomb included. They all have AKs, and they'll charge down mid, not afraid of anything, really. And you can tell by the pace that they're running, it's pretty clear that they've calculated that this is an eco round. They'll just run through, try to run over people as they split out and split up together. Shroud pushes through the apartments, and JDM knows. Can't do that. The discipline of JDM in spawn will reward him with a Shroud kill. One more in the connector is Desi. Tries to fight a long-distance battle with two Ts. Managed to get one with the CZ long distance, and the last one we have to follow is our number seven. D Boren picks up a M4A4 and sticks with his 5.7. Odd, but maybe he didn't have any bullets. Yeah, I think he was out of ammo, that's why he switched it back. I mean, he could have held on to that and tried to save it, but with how much time was left in the round, it probably wasn't uh, doable. 
So now back to another gun round. We see Miniker with an op. Actually, Irukandji as well. So they're wielding a double op look. Um, I don't think JDM's going to go try to pick mid. Uh, he's been going it safe and just trying to pick B. Actually, he's going. So I'm going to stick on his perspective. JDM will be out at okay. a e box. He's looking over the flowers toward the connector. I didn't. I didn't mean to see e box staring at the e box connector, and he'll be flashed out by his teammate, allowing him to peek Miniker, who has to drop out. And this is a very tactical battle. Nobody's willing to sacrifice their op this early in the round. Desi in the palace finds Lucky had to go for the piercing, while Lucky went straight for the direct headshot. So he'll win that one every day of the week. Four alive for the CTs, and they'll call for early rotates toward A. We'll see if that's the right call, because netcodeguides.com is very capable of turning this into a B maneuver. I, I would assume they're going to go B, because uh, they did just see Minica was playing at that connector area, so they do know that's at least two in A. Um, and B would probably be easier for these guys to take, especially with the defensive smokes coming in from the CTs. Look at the map, though. Miniker has just come back around. Since Lucky went to the A ramp and sprayed, they are thinking that they want to do a pinch onto A, and they're now allocating a lot of resources to holding A. Only now do you see Irukandji coming back toward B, Dborn holding at the ladder room, trying to make sure that nobody's at B, and now the B take is becoming more and more and more obvious. It certainly is. Now your are on the defense, and all he has is an op. Well, he does have an op, but I mean, it's going to be hard to defend when there's, they're coming from multiple angles with uh, just that op. Finesse seems to be tracing his opponent through that wall just because we have the X-ray. JDM has his opportunity. He makes the best of it. Two versus two. Miniker and Shroud versus. Now it's just Shroud versus. He has to crouch peak and almost, almost had his opponent zeroed in. With 11 HP, he fights one on two and 15 seconds remaining. He's trying not to let this bomb get planted. And with this much time waning on the clock, he's thinking that he's won the round. But we know, look at the map, he has not won the round. Yeah, and then when he goes to rotate, Lucky is set up for the easy kill on. Oh, or not. No. Crowd is very fast. The bomb is not at B. He thinks it's at B. His team's not even telling him. It's not beeping, guy. You can't. It's not at B. Well, I mean, when you when he did peek out and get the kill, I mean, that is kind of one of those things where it's like, okay, well, it could be B, but yeah, the beeping should have given it away, and now he might be too late. I mean, he does have a kit, but he's got to really, really work to force this kill here. You saw him slash in frustration at the ceiling, being like, oh, I got tricked. Now I just have to save this AK. This is silly. Well, I mean, at least he will save, but that's going to give Netcodes the first lead of the game here, and that's going to be 11 10 so that's gonna already debunk my prediction i thought it was gonna be managing but taking a 16 cent 10 but net codes uh i mean they're having a very impressive t, t side here for all the awards accolades and Superlatives we showered on Manajuma in the first half. Netcode guys has come storming back. And like we called it, we have a game. I'm so happy we have a game tonight because we've seen two blowouts already. We have seen two blowouts. So I'm, yeah, I am glad as well that we have a close game coming up here. Four man mid control. Desi steps out, thought he had a chance to bring down a double, and then he realized I'm looking at four T's. I should probably not stay that far out. So he drops out, gathers a lot of information, tells his teammates they're going for mid control. It doesn't tell us anything. We don't know which site they want, and we just have to try to beat them in mid. There's the trade. Desi gets one, then traded out by Lucky. Three versus two. Shroud and Irukandji versus. And they need this one. They really need this one due to their economic situation. This is a forced eco after this one if they don't pick up the round win. The bomb trails back and does a huge curly cue all the way back to spawn. And we'll go to A. With a minute 10 on the clock and two CTs pretty far out of position. Look, Shroud in the mid-window. Eric Conju's traipsing around somewhere in the underpass. They're just going to have to guess their way around where their opponents are. And it looks like Netcode Guides has the temporary advantage. Yeah, I'm not sure why uh, Manage Human decided to do a four-man push into mid right there. Um, I guess they were hoping to just catch two of Netcodes right there. But it was actually the entire team and their subpar guns. You see, Eric Conju has a FAMAS. They uh, just couldn't match up against the AKs. This is going to be a telling engagement here, and this could mean a sudden 12 to 10. Netcodeguides.com finally makes a convincing lead. It's not just 12 to 10. If they do this right on the eco round, it could be 13 to 10. Yeah, and look at the money right now. Lucky 14,000, 10,000, 10,000, 4,200, 5,800. So, I mean, uh, you know, Netco guys, their economy is looking so strong right now, whereas Manaju is going to be forced on another save. So, I mean, this will most likely be 13-10. The contributions from every player in this game has been so even. And I was looking at the at the graphs just now. JDM with the first entry shot brings down Shroud. I was looking at the graphs just now, and the really pivotal round was 
the 13th round, which is a while ago. And that just tells you that it's been a matter of actual game decision making. Back and forth and back and forth on this eco. Finally, the madness gets put to a stop by Lucky. And JDM puts a cap on the round 13 to 10 like we called it. If if this game has not been about individual contributions, it's been about the way that these offenses have conducted themselves on T-side. Because Manajuma had a great T-side. Netcode Guides is clearly having a great T-side. And all of it was about mid control. The, the most success was found when Manajuma was pushing through mid. When Netcode Guides was pushing through mid. And like we saw in the previous game, Complexity was kind of pinned up pressing through A and B tunnels. There, there's a recurring theme here, right? Yeah, there, there is. I mean, you know, they're they're having some trouble here. But, I mean, like you said, it goes back to the 13th round, which actually I think was the 12th round because they ended the first half with the three-round uh, win streak on their last side, which, I mean, they could have just given up, but they decided to fight back. And, I mean, with that, those three wins in the pistol rounds, I mean, they were just able to get back in this game, and now Net they're, they have to lose. So. Netco, guys, is the same thing that Manajuma had done in the first half by smoking the site and then smoking the E-Box and jungle, just to look a little bit deeper than their opponents do. They seize the site and with probably equal success, but the retake by Deborn is, uh, is enough to give Irukandji just a small chance that he doesn't take. Playing 14 to 10 versus a, in, in a one-on-two situation, I, I can't help but feel like this is the wrong decision. I think he should have gone for the big play. A one-on-two, and I don't think he had access to an M4 or an AK. Um... I think it was probably better for Kanji to save because he's, I mean, he is a good opper, but up close opping, I don't know if he excels at that too much. So, I mean, uh, he's one of those guys who would have probably preferred to pick up an auto if he was going to go for a clutch, and he didn't have access to one, so I think it was a uh, smart move from the save. But, I mean, it is risky because, like you said, now Netcodes is at 14. Um, but, yeah, I mean, at least they will have this off for this next round. Netcodeguides.com sits on the tie point, and this will be... Really the pivotal moment in the entire match is Manajuma needs this round to stay in it. They have all the utility nades that they really need with the exception of Miniker, who has an M4A1, and, excuse me, an M4A4 and a lack of head armor, but it should be enough. It should just be enough. Mid controls, again, netcode guides call. They'll come out, and the first engagement is between Hayes and Miniker. Headshot registered. We may have a trade here. There it is. It's all evened up again. A reverse and head back to the B tunnels with the bomb and travel together in caravan. Not a whole lot of flanking play in the second half for netcodeguides.com. A lot of willingness to, to move together and be active support and active trade. Yeah, I mean, which is fine because if they move together as a team, then they have a better chance of getting better trades, like you said. So, I mean, that's going to work out in their favor. Um, and they're actually looking back towards uh, T-Spawn, thinking that they might have been flanked by Manajuma. But Manajuma at this point... I mean, they're they're playing very passively. They want to, you know, make sure they get these rounds because they are on the on the cusp of losing here. Yeah, no aggressive plays coming up out of Manajuma. It seemed to oh, have been their forte. Arm. Yeah, he does see his arm. Ju turn off the X-ray. There's the engagement. A flurry of bullets, and nobody dies from it. Though Finesse takes a exorbitant amount of damage, down to two HP. The rotates need to be called for because Irakanji is just too far away to support his teammate. Deborn runs out into open space for some reason. I don't. I don't see the reasoning. I, I honestly don't. Irukandji hits the long distance off shot from the white truck. Hayes will pick up his teammates' fallen bomb and they'll try to move their way into the site. A shot in the side. Finesse goes down. Two versus three. Manajuma must win this round. Their opera is down. Two versus one. Hayes steps out, looks into the bomb site, and finds Shroud waiting for him. Massive, massive play. Yeah, Nick, I mean, honestly, that. that take could have gone so much better for net because they had a smoke available to smoke off that catwalk um but they decided to jump down and try to cross regardless i mean after the first guy died that's when they should have got the smoke down but the smoke down came way came way too late and it ended up actually being two cts rotating in from catwalks i mean that would have been a huge smoke left only the kitchen to be looked at for uh the terrorists and they probably would have uh, been able to take that round had they got that smoke out earlier Probably two more rounds of full buys for the T's if you look at the numbers for netcode guys. So Manajuma has the stiffest, the toughest ride to uh, to get through this game and out of it alive. <laughs> Miniker throws a pop flash that really did not work at all. And uh, they'll have to win every round as a gun round here. It's, it's, it's very, very tall order. They started it right, though. They brought down Cutler, who's a fantastic entry for netcodeguides.com. And they'll look to find out what their plan is again there seems to be a fallback here it's two rounds in a row now they've lost their first play and then they default to walking through b tunnels 
I'm not sure that Manajima can pick up on this immediately, but with two kills early and Desi out to mid, maybe they're going to find out that they're pretty much seeing a repeat of the last round. Irukandji gets a falling finesse, blows his head off in midair. One alive, that's Haze. And Irukandji does the honors. A double op look on the CT, so it's a change of defensive philosophy playing back with two ops. That was a phenomenal op shot. It was. It was huge. Um, and you, like you said, they do seem to be having a default where if they lose a man, then they start going towards B, which honestly, I don't think that's a good idea because Irukandji has been playing B this whole time, and he's actually uh, been doing probably the best out of the Manajima squad so far on the second half. So, I mean, he's the one you want to kind of avoid. Um, so I think A is probably going to be their best bet, but they are lining up for B once again. And honestly, if, if Netcode started using some uh, some speed here, I think they would be able to just catch Manajuma off guard and finish up exactly. these last few rounds. Exactly. The first rotator to that side is Miniker. The One of the defenders is Irukandji. They, all, they both have bolt action weapons, so if they get in the faces and be ready to actively trade and smoke them off, they've got better odds of taking the site. So they're in and uncontested. It's going to be a five-on-five -five bomb site battle, which is something you rarely see. Spray through, and Lucky has his first kill. That's the offer Irukandji. Then Desi trades, and Finesse trades back. It's a flurry, and everything is going Netcode Guide's way thus far. With only Shroud left, they will probably, probably move on to the game point. Shroud has the huge clutch to accomplish. No bomb is... Uh, it has been planted, excuse me. That shot by JDM will drop Shroud. It's 15 to 12, Manajuma's Cinderella comeback. Well, it's going to be cut off. I, I'm exaggerating, of course. They did fantastic in the first half, and they seem to have just lost it a little bit here. They have to keep buying out, and Manajuma now plays for overtime. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be rough. I mean, you know, but that time Netcodes did that take right. They got the smoke down on Cat, so that made Irukandri pretty much useless with his op, and he couldn't really help defend the site, um, which it just made taking the site that much easier for Netcodes, and that is exactly what they had to do. Now they're actually going with a different look here. Four people stacked in mid. They will. Deborn finds the first. That's Cutler who gets... Uh brought down and Deborn was traded back on the cat. Miniker lets his opponent go, steps out aggressively trying to chase him and will be punished. Netcodeguys.com is just moments away from winning this one. Desi must clutch. Elsewise, it's a Netcodeguys.com win. He'll step up through the smoke in the connector and the unlikely scenario of him winning starts with him bringing down Hayes through smoke. That's, that's tough to do, but uh, still, the, uh, the odds cannot improve that much for him. There's one in the ladder room to his left, and he has to check. Elsewise, right. it's over. Sivo TV has presented to you a triple header this evening. I'm Cotton. My partner is Klops. Netco